Before I do or say anything in this video, I will probably offend you during the length of it. We've heard of them all. Junker Queen, Reinhardt, Doomfist, Orisa, Sigma, Wrecking Ball, Gramatra, Roadhog, Winston, Saria, and Malga. In this video, I will be talking about what your tank main says about you. Stereotypes are not always true, but they do exist for a reason. I'm not trying to make anyone mad, so if you feel you can't handle how I might slam the absolute shit out of your hero on main, you should quit the video now. Junker Queen I believe that Junker Queen mains are the previous DPS mains who always complained that a tank diff and decided to take it into their own hands. Someone who can't stand still for longer than 5 seconds and their biggest nightmares are number 1 Rhine Shield standoffs and number 2 Kyoko Susus. I strongly believe Junker Queen mains all have their own Discord DOMs and addressing them as a mommy is required by their blood contract. Junker Queen mains are not really going to give out calls in voice chat. They're going to scream, where's the heals, when ulting into 5 enemies alone, fully knowing their team was not with them. Either way, I've also hit those accelerated clutch knives and felt like I'm going to main Junker Queen for my entire life. Then I realized I don't want my balls stepped on and switched. Reinhardt You are a total shad. When you get into a game, you probably make callouts like, let's get this win through teamwork team. If you were born during the Middle Ages, you would be one of the greatest knights protecting all the lost maidens and taking them to your home for <clears throat> protection. Although you probably have some trust issues from the maidens who have used and left you, you would still continue protecting them all as it's in your honor. Unfortunately now, you're just being looked at like a Discord mod having a bunch of Discord kittens that you whisper, good morning, hope your day goes well. <laughs> People might view you as a bit of a cringe, but for you, there's only glory in the chase. You would, however, never disrespect a woman or a man, as long as they respect you. But if someone messes with someone you love, you could probably punch them through 32 floors of a high-rise building, without blinking twice. You play Reinhardt not because he's good or meta. You play him as a part of your own storyline. You don't really care about your rank. You just want to play whatever you enjoy, and you're completely fine with that. The one thing that will give you tears is having the enemy tank switch onto Reinhardt and having a Reinhardt 1v1 for all the glory. It gives you hope for humanity. Whether or not you win or lose, you don't switch and neither do them. The game is only for honor and not victory. You probably have some deep rooted mythical sense of knowing when the other Reinhardt is going to shatter and can in a millisecond put your shield up to block it. The only negative I have here is that you need to learn how to play with your healers and supports and not charging in off cooldown. Besides that, I have no problems with Reinhardt mains. You guys are cool. Doomfist. Now there are a lot of Doomfist mains, considering he's the fourth most played tank in Overwatch 2 right now. Now I don't have an issue with Doomfist mains in general, but here's where the cookie crumbles for me. When your tank picks Doomfist, you're probably going to think, this guy won't swap, he's probably going to be a decent player. And then one second later he overextends as soon as he spawns and cries when the supports won't sacrifice their lives to save him and starts screaming at the whole team. Doomfist mains are probably the people who see themselves as the main person in every game they step into. They have a strong main character syndrome. They practice rollouts for 3 hours before playing any real game and as soon as they get into a game they completely forget how to do them. I don't think there's any people who started playing Overwatch in Overwatch 2 that actually mains Doomfist. You're at least not as hardcore as the DPS Doomfist mains were in Overwatch 1. These people are going to be upset and always going to complain that the punch don't one shot anymore and oh he was so much better before. One thing is obvious for me, Doomfist mains are toxic. They will be in your ears screaming the most horrific things you've ever heard another human say. They'll make you think that the high school bullies are the cutest people in comparison. Advice for that? I don't know, record it and upload a funny YouTube highlight of Doomfist main screaming. Shit, why haven't I done this? By the way, if you're under gold playing Doomfist, I highly suggest you try another tank. You're not gonna get far if your team doesn't understand how Doomfist works. It has nothing to do with you and everything to do with your team. Now, I like Doomfist. I played him a lot, but I'm not a Doomfist main. I'm a Doomfist enjoyer, therefore I'm totally not like the people I mentioned above. Orisa. Now, I don't have a lot of good things to say about Orisa mains, so please read them some extra copium and listen up. Alright, for me there's only two types of Orisa mains. Number one, you played Orisa since Overwatch 1 and will continue to complain that she was 10 times stronger in Overwatch 1 than Overwatch 2. 
making jokes about dropping your drum and unironically saying, don't worry guys, I'm going to put my shield up. You're probably not even recognizing how you have that one ability to make the entire enemy team look like they're NPCs and another ability to cancel pretty much everything because old is always better. Number two, you're glazing the new Orisa Mythic skin because you started playing Overwatch in Overwatch 2 and found a little horse that you liked and you didn't have any other skins for it. You probably have a hard time playing tank until you picked up this little horsey and suddenly went up three ranks just by running in as a golden megacock and not dying a single time. I know castling ultis with your spear is cool and all, but it's much cooler if you actually hit it once. Either way, both of these Orisa mains would love to saddle up this horsey and push someone hard against the wall, cancelling all their movements for 10 seconds. I understand you might see Orisa as a grandma taking care of you, because without her, you wouldn't know where you belong. Ramatra Ramatra mains are scary as hell. When I'm trying to hit my arrows as Hanzo and see a Ramatra running with his fist in the air like a fat guy running to an all-you-can-eat pizza buffet, I literally shit myself. Now, either you're a lore dick writer and love the Ramatra Senyata lore and love listening to his voice lines over and over and having his deep, deep, voluptuous, magnificent, sexy voice in your ears. Either way, you're probably pretty good at aiming, but never use your vortex, or you throw punches all the time, and never hit a shot with your main gun. D.Va D.Va mains are... well... Alright. Most likely, you're an ego getting pushed by your little meow meow to try out new tanks, and won't be settling for anyone that looks like a robot, grandpa, big pig, or a tentacled porn dude. The male D.Va mains are probably the ones I get in my games. Rushing into the enemies to jump out of her mech to emote and well, Either way, you're probably hoping every new game that you will get that sweet, sweet five-man bomb to post to your Discord server because people mock you for being a diva mate. Sometimes, of course, you get those diva that just sits on the enemy team supports with her whole ass of a mech absorbing every ultimate with your defense matrix and carrying the whole team. Now, I just wish that happened to me sometime. Wrecking Ball If you main Wrecking Ball, I can put some money on the fact that you have a name like Only Balls or I Play Ball or fit these balls in you, or something like that. And that you never actually call him Wrecking Ball. It's Hamster, Hamter, Rat, or Ball. You're probably quite good on Ball, and have a good game sense, but you have not yet grasped the idea of teamwork. You feel like you make plays, and you do stuff for the team, but you're literally leaving your team without a frontline in 90% of your games. Once you got that five-man grapple knockout, and you're chasing that high ever since, so you make reckless plays filled with copium, when the enemies pick Sombra to counter you, you refuse to change, because counter doesn't exist. Yet again, filled with copium, forcing your team to just go next. Don't get me wrong, I love playing ball. For a solid 30 seconds, I'm having the time of my life trying to set up my the enemies. Then I get completely destroyed and go Orisa. Roadhog If you main Roadhog, you probably brag to all your friends when you got your first hair on your balls. You're probably complaining all the time about Roadhog being too weak, but you love playing Ilawis, pulling people to your hole. You hate the Road Dog update, because you loved spamming your right click into Shokes, hoping for an easy kill, and now you have too many abilities to adjust to. Overall, Road is not good, but he's not bad. If you play Road Dog right now, I actually endorse you. But if you know how to hook and can hit them, you're probably high rank, but if you miss more than 30% of your hooks, I would reconsider who you make. If you're one of those Roadhog who won't miss a single hook, it actually feels like you're playing with your food. And by food, I mean me specifically. Playing a poor little Ana, staying in the back line, having a fat ass pig jump in front of me like I'm PewDiePie 2012 playing a music. I believe you are one of the main reasons people smash their keyboards into pieces after being hooked 10 times in a row. You probably shout out the most random things in team chat for no apparent reason, as you already know you're doing the most this character can provide with, and don't need to say anything important. Now with the recent changes to Roadhog, he's got a lot more people who mains him. These people are not the true Roadhog mains. They haven't been there for the ups and downs, they haven't been there through the hardship, through the Roadhog nerves, through the Roadhog being trash. You who've been there, you're the real ones. Winston if you main Winston, 
Well, first, you would never actually call him Winston. Either it's Winton, Monkey, Ape, Winnie the Boop, Easy Winstona. Now, I'd say there's two different types of Winston enjoyers. Let's call number one apes. As you can tell by their name, these are the people who want to have fun playing the game. You love diving into their Widowmaker and just staring them to death as you blast them with actual plasma. It's something you dream of. You also probably scream, where's the nano boost as soon as you die after jumping into all five of the enemies. Don't get me wrong, these ape mains are... Wait, let me try speaking in your language. Winton jump. Winton electric. Winton boop. Winton go brrr. Winton smash. Now, the second of these mains are the Winston mains. These people are very skilled at Overwatch, considering that Winston is one of the hardest tanks to play well. So you have a big understanding of healing cooldowns, enemy cooldowns, and of course, Reapers. You probably actually understand his ultimate. You don't do it like me and ju ult to just jump around. You instead plan out who you're actually ulting and can follow your jumps and your punches. As a Widow Enhanced Enjoyer, I'm scared shitless of you. With that, I also respect you, Ape Salute. Sigma. If you play Sigma, you're probably a little bit into roleplaying. You picked him up as he seemed like a combination between Whiteheart and Orisa, and you felt like you were on top of the world. Nowadays, as soon as you ulti, you scream into voice chat, THE UNIVERSE SINGS TO ME! And after that, write something like, you just got killed by a barefoot mentally deranged man. And you're actually just talking about yourself since you haven't read the Sigma lore. Your hobby as a child was throwing big rocks into the lake, seeing gravity do its job and making a big splashy splash. Now you found a character who harnessed the entire gravity and it makes you cream. What did he say? Honestly now, being a Sigma main probably means you're pretty good at the game. He's not the easiest hero to master, and definitely in the wrong hands are as shit as chocolate and toothpaste together. Saria. Now, Sarias, I know it. You are addicted to damage. damage. You're probably yelling out to your team every other game. Check tank diff, look at my damage. Honestly, you're probably pretty good at the game. You're tracking CDs of ultimates and making sure when to bubble to block the most amount of damage, and of course, so you can output the most amount of damage. As soon as you hear Genji shout, you get some electric nerve to simply solo ult him and dance next to it. That's the stuff that makes you cream. While you are very good at the game, most Arya mates have a massive ego, constantly smack talking your teammates and complaining on diffs. You're probably saying though, if I talk the talk, I walk the walk, but you're still one of the most toxic tank mains in all of Overwatch. Just like Saria, you probably go to the gym every other day, you're fit, you inject protein powder in your eyes because you want to feel something. Still, you're probably not even lifting more than Saria does. Mauga. Honestly, I don't really know what to say about Mauga because as of recording this, he's still pretty new to the game. I would say though, if you've already decided to main this hero, you probably also like watching people suffer purely for enjoyment. As soon as you see the enemy pick Mauga, you know you have to counterpick it. Without that, in my experience, it's usually a guaranteed loss. Being versus a Mauga is basically like when I was a little having my bigger brother repeating thousand needles for the hundredth time on our car rides during the summer. It doesn't matter how tough you are, it's going to be painful. Considering I might be early to your Mauga main addiction, I do have a wish. Please stop. Before it's too late. Sincerely, all of Overwatch. Now you have my take on stereotypes of different tank mains. If you do not agree with me, please tell me why and how. As I said in the beginning, stereotypes are not always true, but they do exist for a reason. Also, if you're a DPS or a support main, don't you worry, you're not going to be forgotten. Your time to shine or cry will be in the next two videos. Thank you for watching. Bye bye now.